Keith Peswami will be presenting on the topic uh, veterinary curriculum integration, vertical or horizontal. So, does medical curriculum very interesting topic uh, to hear from Dr. Peswami? Before I hand over the floor to Dr. Peswami, it's my proud privilege and I'm very happy to introduce uh, Dr. Peswami to the audience. Dr. Swami is a graduate of Bangalore Veterinary College. Um, to share, I am his classmate. So he did, graduated from Bangalore Veterinary College in the year 1985. Then uh, during masters, he joined uh, Veterinary College as an instructor. Then completed a masters in Veterinary Anatomy. Then joined as a uh, continued his uh, career as an assistant professor in the Veterinary College. Then he moved out to Liverpool, UK, to pursue his doctoral degree, then post-doctorate from uh, uh, Liverpool, then joined as faculty at Liverpool University, then moved on to uh, Iowa State University as professor in the year 2012, and since then he's working as professor in the uh, biomedical science. So he, though he teaches anatomy, his uh, area of interest is neuroscience, so he has, publication, uh, he has published uh, more than 50 uh, international reputed articles, uh, research articles in the uh, international reputed journals. Uh, to highlight some of the accomplish accomplishments, external recognition and impact of Dr. Tipet Swami, he is the principal investigator of NIH funded funds, funded grants. He is 2019 award winning faculty panel member for CELTS seminar topic discussion and he, he, he was invited speaker for uh, uh, so many universities, Yale University, Long Island University, University of Liverpool, Oregon School of Veterinary Medicine, Cornell College of Veterinary Medicine uh, and many more. He was also invited uh, speaker in the international conferences such as American Epilepsy Society, American Society for Neurochemistry, International Society for Neurochemistry, and others. He is the editorial membership member for Histology and Histopathology Journal, Journal of Molecular Neuroscience, Journal of Neuroscience Research, Frontiers in Neurology. And he is a peer reviewer of uh, grant applications such as uh, Medical Research Council UK, Biotechnology and Biological Sciences Research Council UK, the Wellcome Trust UK, Pain Relief Foundation UK, NSF GRFE panel member Neuroscience to adopt, any NHS study section, and many more. Uh, he has received many awards and honors, such as Commonwealth Fellowship for PhD funded by British Council UK, then Welcome Trust Postdoctoral Fellowship, the Royal Society Travel Fellowship, Joyters Distinguished Veterinary Teacher Award, nominee for AAVMC National Award and University Award, College of Veterinary Medicine Distinguished Veterinary Teacher Award, the Dean's Endowment Professorship, and R21 NIH Grant Award. So, he is mainly focusing into teaching, especially anatomy and neuroscience research. As I told you, he has published more than 50 to 60 uh, research articles in uh, international journals. And he is handling currently many more projects, many more uh, National Institute of Health uh, external funded projects. Uh, that is one is uh, currently is handling toxin specific symptomatic drugs in combination with novel neuroprotectants uh, funded by grant value of four lakh dollars, another grant value of four lakh dollars from uh, um, again on the long-term neurotoxicity, then R21, that is the code I believe, fly-mediated neuroinflammatory signaling in epileptogenesis and epilepsy, again a uh, four lakh uh, US dollars grant, so many more projects he is handling right now, uh, majority are external grants as well as uh, internal grant funded. Uh, really, we are honored to have you, Dr. Tipesh Swami. We are looking forward to hear from you with the interesting topic. Now, the floor is yours. Maybe around 40 minutes. 
uh, you can cover the presentation followed by uh, 10 to 15 minutes discussion. Floor is yours. Dr. Tipe Swami, please. Thank you. You need to allow me to share the screen, Ravi. Share, you can share the screen. Permitted, Dr. Nagapa. still host disabled participant screen sharing. So you need to disable. Okay, meanwhile, um, just I will start speaking before uh, I put up my slides. So thank you for inviting me, uh, Dr. Hegde and Dr. Shukumar. Uh, this is a great honor um, to talk to you all and especially for my uh, all the uh, past colleagues, and um, and it's nice to nice to see you all, uh, Dr. Virana. You are the first batch I taught you in 1986. I, I do I do remember that. Um, so let me try this one. So congratulations um, on, on this great occasion. So your hard work has really um, paid a lot, and I can see the progress you guys have made uh, is tremendous so far in 13 years. Uh, that is that is a uh, really uh, a, a good beginning. Still it is showing up host disabled. Ravi. We had this problem yesterday, right? So it is better, it is better to create as a co-host. I know, I know. Um, then it would be easy to handle. One second, Edwin, I just put a word to enable sharing. Of course, um, we, we tried, we tried, uh, we did a um, test uh, two days ago. Um, so we, we knew the problem, right? Again, it is so you're going to cut down five more minutes from my talk, Ravi. No, 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 you can carry on. <laughs> <laughs> it is midnight here. <laughs> and it is, it is so, um, uh, Dr. Ganapati, I think he's one hour ahead of me. He should have spoken first. Um, we could have gone to bed early, right? So oh, oh, we are uh, confused in that because America, yes, on this. Yeah, Washington DC, they, they, they are one hour ahead of me. Okay. Uh, no, sir, uh, I'm actually one hour behind you. I'm in Seattle, Washington. People do get confused. Oh, you're so, oh okay, Washington, you're oh, no, right. That's, that's, that's okay then, you, you, you're better off. <laughs> okay. Can you share? Uh, no, it's still it is showing up as um, host disabled participant screen. I think what you did last time, I think she should change it to co-host. He should include he should include me and uh, Dr. Ganapati as co-hosts. Well, I have to thank you uh, for working it out for me as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, 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 we tried two days ago and right. we, we had a similar problem. Um, One second, bear with me. Just, so can, uh, I, can I start teaching anatomy instead? So instead of, uh, you know, people might uh, wake up, right? I think Dr. Krishna Islur is uh, raising his hand. <laughs> nice to see you. Saying hello to you. Namaskara, sir. Tumba kushai to tamanna nodi. Oh, thank you. Thank you, yeah. Krishna Islur. Kannada la matadu bodanta. 
it is like a closed platform right? more, I know. more informal rather Adike. than being too formal sir adike nan kannada dalle prarambha made bitte namge since it is a live youtube video right uh, ravi sir namaskara rakh tipe samare ramchandra oh right um tata institute oh yes, <laughs> yes. I, i know i know yes we whenever we are thinking about uh, translational research we think about um, uh yeah. you and mo- and monkeys at the same time <laughs> <laughs> so i thought yeah, this is three times so i can at least start to your so yeah, so, 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 yeah so many times we were really yeah. thinking okay we could have done this work if if yeah. we were in still know, uh, it's not too late yes certainly yes i'm i'm, I'm <laughs> something something i am thinking about that uh, so that is one way of uh, taking the drugs forward for fda yeah. approval Uh, so once we test any um, any of sure. our uh, investigational new drugs yeah. Yeah. Uh, in rat or mouse model sure. um, so that is one way of doing it so how is research at uh, uh, tata yes, institute is doing well so so any any breakthrough um, uh, breakthrough with, is, it, is it is any covid related research going yeah, on right, now, right now i got a dbt project uh, to develop some uh, vaccine on the this one um, covid 19 myself and professor samitra das so recently just uh, a few weeks back we got a grant from dbt and we are working oh, on that so using a vlp yeah vlp like uh, proteins virus like proteins so we are nice, we are nice. virus like particles we are using so okay as a, this one so just started so it may take a little bit time six months uh, time we have taken let us see mm-hmm. okay good good so nimdu innond super yeah innond one more super speciality of dr tipes swami sir is that he is uh, having incredible memory power in <laughs> fact just now i uploaded that in the chat itself uh, it was because he, no it, it, oh the past tense it is, is you are talking Yes, it is possible. Oh, now, okay. now it is it is hard to remember names. Um, yeah. Maybe maybe I have too many anatomy terminologies in my you know brain. <laughs> I think I should uh, offload some of that, yeah. but I can't delete those. Right? I believe you were remembering yeah. the ID numbers of almost all the UG students. Oh, Madakin Kelsarli, well, that's another one. Then what about that? So now we have plenty of research to do. So. Uh, so the focus is more on research and of course uh, teaching that is something i i i have passion for uh, teaching um so come on it's not getting enabled he is coming as host disabled participant i have just put a word they are just trying it out and... hello dr satarayan hello one ghante inda kayta kutkondidini nin maat kelikke ಇನ್ನು ಇನ್ನು ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಅರ್ಧ ಗಂಟೆ ಆದ್ರೆ ನಾನು ಒಂದು ಇದ್ದೆ ಹೊಡಿತಾ ಇರ್ತೀನಿ ಬೇರೆ ಯಾರಾದ್ರೂ ಹೇಳಿಸ್ಬೇಕಾಗತ್ತ ಸೊ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಎಂ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಫಿಜಿಯಾಲಜಿ ರೈಟ್ how are you nice nice to see you dr narayan swami namaskara sir dr niranjan oh you, hello dr niranjan now <laughs> 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 viran avrella nim first students actually we are all 1980- classmates 1986 or 87 right 85 batch actually yes 85 okay yeah i started uh, yes. teaching 1986 yes correct <laughs> so you 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 were all the guinea pigs for my teaching <laughs> see your so, guinea pigs are I, I i i owe you a lot i owe you a lot for for you guys <laughs> so you you molded my career you know uh, oh, so that that's what it is uh, actually I mean, it is mutual it's always uh, teaching is like that i mean uh, it is not just the teacher it is the students also how much you po- you guys participate rather you guys in means in, in those years <laughs> so we remember dr so krishna kakade also 
<laughs> oh yeah, yeah, he's oh. another uh, legendary anatomist. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Dr. Dr. K. K. Ah. Tirao, uh, yeah. Abdus Salam. Abdus Salam used to teach us um, um, embryology course. Uh, yeah. Dr. Chandra Mauli. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, um, all of them passed away except Dr. Kakade. Um, so. Okay. <laughs> Was Actually, I was in touch with you in, uh, oh, when you were in Liverpool. I was in Dubai. It was mm -hmm. a hot racing completely. All oh, right. Okay. I sent a big mail uh, saying that, you know, I'd like to go uh, pursue the career in uh, Liverpool mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. But now my son has come up. He is finishing his uh, uh, undergraduation. Right. So he's okay. likely Good. to continue somewhere in veterinary science. No, oh, nice. <laughs> So nice talking to you, sir. Nice talking to you. Thank you. Ravi, now last time in Madhubala, so I think uh, he changed the host, Allah. No, no, no. Can you do, can you do that? That, that uh, option is not coming there. That's why they are trying. Yesterday also we tried with PowerPoint. It has come. Shared the... Could it give a problem? Veterinary College Austin is the host. Okay, sorry for the inconvenience and... Uh, that icon or what you told that day, it's not uh, showing up. Showing up. Mm -hmm. That's why they are facing problems. So maybe when, when you are setting up, uh, it should be set up as um, uh, multi-host. Dr. Ganapati may have some tips for uh, for resolution. No tips on Zoom. <laughs> Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams, yes. Oh, okay. So you, you guys use Microsoft Team? Uh, mostly Microsoft Teams, yes. Yeah, um, we use both uh, WebEx and uh, Microsoft Team and Zoom. Zoom is uh, can be can be problematic like this often, but WebEx uh, recently I found it very very useful. Yeah. So yeah, no no problems uh, with WebEx so far. So the one problem with Zoom, what we have noticed is uh, um, sharing the screen. So that mm. can be a problematic when you, you, sh you should do that when you are setting up the Zoom meeting. Right. I wonder if you could uh, send your slides to them and they just move it for you. I don't know how complicated it is yours. Okay, that is quite a big, I could have done that um, before. I should have done that, I, I completely forgot. Yeah. Uh, that is that is a big file, and actually I spent a lot of time making animation on. Uh, so yeah. there is something uh, I was looking forward to share with. Uh... Okay. So... Hello. Hi. 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 Oh, Shripad. <laughs> my goodness. Shripad Shripad Ravi is my classmate. Yes, sir. Um, Good to see you. Right now. Just try. You can share. Sorry? Yeah, it's, it's, okay. it's okay now. That's nope. What nope, nope, yes. nope. Host okay. disabled participant screen sharing. So screen sharing, I think they should yeah, find happen. somewhere and you should click on that. <laughs> somebody can somebody can Google and just look for, you know, how to disable the participant screen on... Um, you know, YouTube. So there will be some uh, tutorials on that. Still, you cannot enable multiple uh, participants. Of multiple. You have enabled that. Multiple nope. participants. Not coming? Nope, nope, nope. Let me refresh the screen. <laughs> No, it is not coming up, Ravi. Reattending to it. That day you told no that advanced setting multiple apartments enable. Mm -hmm. so did it. Problem.
So this is the 13th year of uh, Hassan Veterinary College, right? So how many, so 13, five, seven, seven batches graduated so far? Yes, sir. Seven batches put together 276 to graduates, sir, totally, all together. So, yeah, now you, are, you can share. Dr. Pesami, you can share. I, I also can do it. Now you can share. Yay. Yes. Brilliant. Yes. Do it. Yes, Thank yes, you. Yes. Now you guys will, will know. Okay, so let me jump straight on to this one. Yes. yes. I will, can you see screen, yes. Ravi? Okay, there you go. Good. Thank you. Good, 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 good. So uh, I will put you to sleep very soon. Um, so just, I would like to spend a couple of minutes on this slide. Um, so while watching, uh, think about how we can integrate veterinary curriculum um, to meet the demand for the current generation. Um, I think many of you might know this breed. This is our Desi Great Han, Great Han breed, so Great Dane. So this is a um, Mudol breed. And here is a um, British Great Dane. You can see its facial expression. It is a bit grumpy. And here it is smiley um, Mudol breed. Um, so if you think about anatomy, this is how I would encourage students to think about animal rather than just looking at the dissected specimens as per se. Uh, Dr. So, little, little louder, louder. Tone should be a little okay, louder. Just, just yes. one second. I will increase the... Okay, can you hear me now? Better? Is it better, Ravi? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Let me start all over again. Okay, so here is the boy who is dreaming of becoming a veterinarian. Um, so this animation represents something that what we should um, think about uh, when we are teaching students. Uh, we should encourage them to ask how, why, and what. So uh, we should encourage students to think about um, reasoning rather than just memorizing per se. So that is the overall um, you know, theme of my talk, uh, encouraging students to think um, innovatively and proactively, uh, looking for alternative ways of learning to reach the curriculum. So integration means this is what I use this uh, video, for example, that is created by one of my clinical colleague, Dr. Jessica Ward. So to integrate the cardiovascular system. So I will give you a couple of examples how we integrate uh, curriculum uh, in, in the new design. So this is a, a complicated slide, but by looking at that, you might remember Appa Hakida Aladamara. So uh, again, it has a negative um, annotation um, in that proverb. So it is not to hang, but it is to hang on to uh, the traditional approach. Traditional approach is good. It is um, good for breaking the ground and to lay solid foundation. However, for current generation, it needs a bit of a different approach. So now it is the era of open access. So we should develop vision for um, you know, for future uh, veterinary education. So this is really important. Now, another approach uh, is about attitude. Um, so we, as students, we, we know we enjoyed this movie. Um, it is Nodi Swami in Avirode Hege. This is how we are. But I would change this. Navirode Hege, so means if that means stubbornness, you will not change whatsoever. So we should come out of this um, mindset. So we should be flexible. Teaching and learning is a dynamic process. So often we hear people saying, oh, I have been teaching for so many years. I know everything. So that means you are imposing yourself as a shunted growth. We will never grow if you think that I already know everything. So this is how, um, and another way of you know, expressing uh, a sort of complacency is this is how it has been taught. Okay, so our teachers taught this like this, and this is how the college um, taught for many years. 
so it is working why should we change fine if it is working okay you were riding a bike probably when you were a kid if you are 60 plus years old now why do you want to drive a car so why can't you hang on to the old tradition old method now things are changing the current generation is different so we have to move on with the flow another negative approach is nam system e hige swami so nobody can change the system so we blame the system so we are good at blaming system but we know we don't just end up there we bring our dad and say nam apprana go change madakagodilla so if we are so stubborn then we will stop thinking probably this is familiar to you all and for me too i always think about this before blaming someone or blaming some system so when we were kids probably our parents were told if you are pointing finger at our sibling saying that oh this is not me someone else did it so we will point finger at someone but my mom and dad have told me okay before pointing finger at others think there are three fingers facing at you and there is another finger facing up somewhere so either that could be a, a demon or it could be the god or a god so always we were scared of something right so that is how a sort of a discipline was imposed in our um, life so the same thing we can apply and if you think about okay three fingers pointing at you before blaming something else for the failures or for not able to achieve what you i was supposed to achieve so i would ask myself okay how i put enough hard work or is my approach is right to achieve the goals whether it is teaching or research whatever it is most importantly to achieve something you must be passionate about it you must be enthusiastic about it you just for sake of teaching if you teach you can't motivate students paatha madbekallappa anta hodre that's it students won't listen to you and that is that is the end of the story you need to show passion and you need to be enthusiastic about what you are doing and when you are doing something don't expect in returns so by teaching this is don't expect that you know you should be appreciated just because you are teaching so it all depends on how you teach and how you motivate so this is how i would say don't be a teacher or a professor by title doesn't mean anything be a real guru so that is what it means a teacher um, in real sense so um, if you balance these there will be a better outcome so i have changed the thickness of the arrows so if you recollect physics the thickness of arrow determines the force so reduce the force blaming others increase the force on these to achieve the best outcome what you dream for often we say oh let us go by the syllabus now we know that when we were students i don't know whether it is still uh, said in the uh, in, in in university campuses kudumigalo yen kudumte maraya so it's just bookish knowledge should we shouldn't we change why can't we include a research component in our curriculum business management now a lot of people they want to do their own practice even managing a simple veterinary um, you know service station so we need to we need to motivate them we need to train them to deal the uh, deal with the business and the service component it is really important to treat farmers with respect or the clients with respect and animals with respect and then we have to incorporate some service components into it i know some of the veterinary students they are really doing lot of service uh, activities and you know uh, camps um, to treat animals and so we we it should be a part of curriculum and to motivate them so to achieve this of course um it is it is important to have collaborators so collaborate with medical schools now for example hassan has got medical school so why can't you you know talk to them identify a common project include you know ngos for example bill gates is another bill gates is another uh, source of you know maybe there may be some common interest explore those opportunities look at the industries what they are interested in herbal medicine this is really a great way of you know exploring it further there is lot of skepticism about 
uh, herbal medicine, it is because of, um, you know, lack of appropriate testing. And, um, you know, that is something we need to uh, address. There is a lot of interest nowadays in herbal medicine. So um, the veterinary students can think about on that, and especially the faculty um, sh should also think about um, incorporating research in the curriculum. Yes, be an idiot. However, rather I would say but, there are three big buts here. So you can be an idiot to achieve all is well at the end of the day. So think outside the box, rather, think there is no box so very often we try to put ourselves in a in a framed thinking and we think okay so let us do what we have been doing so why do you want to change well i said there are no boxes there are four boxes here gross anatomy pathology can we integrate if you are boxed Think about topographic anatomy, pharmacology, infectious agents, virology, bacteriology, parasitology, of course, the clinical sciences. So can we integrate? Because we have a different mindset. We are boxed. So we cannot integrate if we have a, a compartmentalized thinking and approach. So if you have a PhD in neuroscience, Oh, you can't, how can be a neuroscience scientist can be a professor of anatomy or professor of pathology, professor of infectious diseases. Break those barriers, no walls. So take away the boxes and think openly. So with that open approach, instead of teaching histology and physiology separately, why can't you teach histophysiology? Because there is histopathology, right? Likewise, you can bring in all the preclinical and the paraclinical. And very often we think only anatomy. Once you pass anatomy, that's it, end of the story. You don't take that to clinical practice. Once you finish pathology, that's it. You only think about pathology in clinics to send animals back to pathology for postmortem. So think differently. So that is what I always um, encourage my junior faculty to think about um, bringing innovation. So this is one, I, I, I showed this in, in, the, uh, in the title slide. So this is one way of integrating anatomy uh, with, with clinical uh, subjects. So we need to think about, um, I need to move this slide, this screen away. Um, so sharing resources, so there are, you know, if you are working in clinics, so we're going to share uh, some of the images, for example. Oh, wait, it's not moving. Can I see something? Oh. So um, use radiograph, for example, in anatomy courses. Why you have to, why the students have to learn from bones? They don't see bones in their practice, do they? So use radiographs to understand how they are related to the body. So for example, reflex tests. Reflex tests are done in clinics. Why you should do that in anatomy? Again, to integrate basic anatomy with physiology and then with uh, the clinical outcome. So that is how I would think uh, beyond uh, just uh, basic anatomy. Now encourage students to use live animals to learn anatomy, for example. <laughs> it may be sound silly, collaborate with farmers, local farmers, ask your students to go and work in farmers with farmers, let them know if they are not coming from the, you know, farming background, let them go and, you know, live a day or two in, 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 in the local uh, community to understand the veterinary problems. So that is, there is this, there is a way, it is not just the politicians, they have to go and, you know, uh, stay in the, in the village. So students should start, the faculty should encourage to do that. And um, think it, it is a different approach. Um, so it is not really uh, a big deal to implement. So here is a um, case with, uh, you know, when you are, just, this is just to encourage you to think beyond uh, the traditional way we teach anatomy. So there was one veterinary student in here. So she was working in a hospital and 
there they found a persistent uracus. So this is the embryological structure, the uracus. So I'm not going to detail that. So they correct that condition. So you know that after a cough is born, so when you, if you do not disinfectant um, the umbilicus properly, then that can get infected. The umbilical abscess can lead to polyarthritis in calves. So it is a common problem in rural India. So disinfection, so how that causes so the pathogens that passes from the umbilical vein to the liver and it, and it spreads to the different parts of the body. So when you are teaching, incorporate that, integrate with pathology, inter integrate with bacteriology. Say for example, the synovial fluid, when you sample the synovial fluids and it, there are E. coli toxins. So you, you, can, you can think about how you can change the curriculum um, so that currently uh, we are teaching uh, in, in, in veterinary colleges. So that means integration and also application. So um, in my teaching, for example, I give clinical scenarios for students to uh, apply their anatomy from clinical perspective. So here is a case with, uh, you know, you, you can see that how the uh, limb is flexed and they have to think about the muscles and, and the nerves applying to that. And also from clinical perspective, so the treatment options. So that is how I think we should, we should encourage students to uh, learn uh, basic sciences. And also create a scenario based. I am not talking about problem based learning. Problem based learning has its own problems. So it is not problem based learning. You can incorporate in your didactic teaching the scenario based. Start of a lecture with a scenario and then introduce the, you know, uh, the syllabus. So that is that makes really interesting uh, for students to learn um, any boring subject if you think it is boring. Now I will move on to teaching approach or the curriculum to um, examination, the, the innovation and the rigor or transparency in, in assessment. Are we giving exams to appease students, giving an easy exam and taking the pride and oh, the, the teacher is great. So we got really 90%. The class average is about 96%. Is it good? So, also, when you are testing questions or teaching, are you aiming, are you motivating students to memorize things and get 100% and don't translate that knowledge, apply that knowledge later in clinical years? So when you are setting questions, think on those lines. Are you testing the understanding of the subject or are you testing the memory? So we are not giving memory tests. So we are testing their understanding and application of their um, facts in clinical scenarios. Here are a couple of examples. I am not going to go into great details. I am not asking you to answer these questions. Don't worry about that. So here is just a basic anatomy question, bones and muscles and nerves, right? So I started off with giving a case here with this, you know, which has got a, a flexed limb. It is unable to bear weight. It has an history of fracture. So then they have to bring, oh, okay, history of fracture. Okay, fracture, this is how it looks like. Okay, everyone knows how it looks like on a radiograph. But think about the bones and then what is the nerve that is closely associated with. So that is how I think the student should expand their understanding of um, basic science. So here is another example to integrate anatomy histology, gross anatomy, histology, and physiology, and the clinical uh, component. So when you do a pinprick test, so these are the different pathways activated, and that is the withdrawal effect. So how the different muscles are activated. Again, I am testing their understanding of anatomy and their ability to apply that knowledge from a reflex test point of view to diagnose uh, a condition. Utilize any resources that you find. Um, so it can be from your dissected specimens or a, a case from a, a clinics. So the, here is a case of um, perineal hernia that we found in a dissection in the lab, in anatomy lab. And I, I, I created a scenario and I included that as, a, as an exam question. So again, I am not talking about the perineal hernia here. I am talking about the anatomical components involved in there. So if you want to repair that, so when you do surgery, so what are the anatomical structures you will come across? Again, I am testing their anatomy knowledge, but in a different style. Here, it is again anatomy question. Some of you may be the, those who have learned anatomy about 20 years ago, 30 years ago, may be thinking, it is, a, is it anatomy question? We can't see any you know, uh, muscles or 
nerves or bones? Yes, it is an anatomy question. So this is a CAD. So a veterinarian used a wrong size needle when he gave or she gave the intramuscular injection and damaged the nerve here. So therefore it is unable to extend the hock. So again, unable to extend the hock. Again, think about the muscles that extend the hock. Think about the nerves. Okay, when you give the intramuscular injection, where do you give intramuscular injection? Oh, there is a nerve there that is sciatic nerve. So this is how um, students will start thinking and applying that uh, anatomy knowledge from clinical perspective. We know we, we love bones, right? Osteology is, is one of the favorite uh, subject. It is easy to memorize things. and um, But again, think about how we can apply that knowledge from clinical perspective. Um, say, for example, in this case, so you want to fix the stifle joint. You have to pass the intramedullary pinning passing through the, the joint. So without, you can't da damage the cartilage. So how do you achieve that? So then the students start learning about stifle joint. Okay, yes, I have, to, I have to explore this one. Let me review my anatomy. So this is also useful for clinicians, also useful for those who are uh, doing clinical rotation. So we, again, this is another example of integration and application. And so when you do the uh, intratracheal tubing or when you pass the stomach tube or then there's a gastric tube. So again, bring in the anatomy and remind them, you know, what they are learning and why they are learning. <clears throat> this is another great example. And I, I love this slide for several reasons. Say, for example, um, you are giving an intramuscular injection in a dog or intravenous injection. So or a drug, so when you give a drug, so encourage students to think, okay, think about the route it takes or the route it takes to reach the heart and to the organ of your interest. Say, for example, there is an abscess in the liver. So you give um, intravenous injection to treat that abscess, trace how the drug is transported to the heart and then to the liver. So that means they have to integrate uh, the systemic circulation, the pulmonary circulation, and then uh, blood supply to the liver. That is one way of doing that. <clears throat> I don't know about uh, if Dr. Umesh is, uh, is online, probably you might remember this case that when we were uh, rotating in um, a containment hospital, there was a case. Um, so at that time, Dr. Srini was, was, uh, was a clinician and he was uh, on, on, on holiday. So we were dealing with certain cases and there was a dog, you know, came to the clinic with some, you know, general um, unwell and uh, that, ha that dog had developed a, a habit of eating uh, beetroot. So that dog was um, brought to the clinic, but not because it was eating beetroot, but it was brought to the clinic because it has some, you know, uh, other conditions. So then we collected the urine sample and we saw that it is reddish. Then we were thinking, oh, it is hematuria. Okay, we declared that it is having a, either urolithiasis um, uh, or um, some problem with the urinary bladder. And we were asking for, bio, you know, uh, to do the urine test. So at that time, the technician told me, no, you can't do that. Just leave it in the fridge and Dr. Srinivas will come and sort it out. And then after a couple of days, we realized that it is not a maturia, it is due to discoloration. Why can't we think about a scenario? Okay, so when you eat beetroot, your urine color changes. Again, ask students to think about that. You can integrate, you know, absorption. Then that become where the physiology comes in and the it goes to the liver and so that is how you will integrate and how it is excreted through the urine so you can integrate several systems so this is this is one way of integrating um, so here you can um, likewise the drug when you give the drug the pharmacotherapeutics when you are teaching the pharmacology so think about uh, the scenario and bring in anatomy physiology and also um, apply some clinical uh, relevance to that okay so um this is another case of, uh, you know, for example, parasitology. So, you know, um, filaria, um, diaphylaria is, is a, the, you know, dog heartworm is, is a common condition in some parts of Karnataka as well. So think about a scenario where there is a mosquito bite, it is transmitted to the uh, heart and, you know, those type of scenarios. You can, you can come, you know, uh, come up with your own uh, ideas to uh, bring in clinical uh, and also, for example, pathology, when you do the postpartums, you will see that in, so where do you find this one? So give this type of um, scenarios for the students to think. So innovative teaching, and when you put a lot of your efforts and your um, heart and mind 
um, and brain into it. So of course we put our brain into it and if you don't put your mind and heart into it, um, we, we may not achieve what we want to achieve. So I will give you one um, example here. Um, so my task when I um, took this new position in 2012 in, uh, in Iowa State University, uh, I moved to Iowa State University and my task was to improve the course, um, the anatomy course. So that was the lowest score in the entire veterinary college. So I was asked to improve that course and it took nearly four years to take it to 4.6 score out of five. So um, again, to achieve something, um, so you need to be really, um, although this is my personal score, it, it, it always, it, when you are looking to improve a course, your personal score also increases. So this is 4.82 out of five, that is how the students grade the teacher depending on how you teach and how you motivate students to learn. So I never looked at my score. I always looked at what I should achieve for the course. It is the course score that matters. It is not my personal score. So when you are achieving something, I always think about these four P's, patience, persistence, perseverance. So these are the things um, I, I, I always try to uh, remember. Now, um, I will not take much time. And before moving on to uh, just another five, maybe six, seven minutes on research, just I, 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 I ask you to uh, think about this. I think you might have seen on. Okay, so the message, I, I, I don't think I should uh, talk about the message. Nothing is impossible, we can achieve it. Whether it is a new college or an old college, doesn't matter. It is just, it is the mindset. Um, the next part of my talk, it, it will be very short, promise you. I won't, I won't take into um, data rich slides. Um, so I was asked uh, by Ravi and, uh, and the Dean, Dr. Shukumar, um, so, to include you know, the curriculum and uh, how, how we can integrate research. So I was really struggling uh, when I was making this slide. So therefore I, I, I decided to put all around. So thinking that you know, I should beat around the bush. Um, so that is, that, is, that is the message. It can fit anywhere. It, is all, it all depends on how you uh, plan your research. Uh, so as I said, include research um, service component Um, and, and then think about um, collaboration uh, with, um, with, with medical schools. Now, the research I have been pursuing since I um, moved to Liverpool was on nerve injury. And later on, I had to change that um, to epilepsy because of uh, lack of funding support in the United Kingdom. So the, the research theme is disease modification um, in epilepsy. Ravi, could you, could you ask someone to mute? Um, there is a lot of noise going on in the background. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So this is a, a, a mouse brain. Um, this is a normal mouse brain. This is an epileptic mouse. So this mouse, if you look at the cells here, these are all neurons. The red cells are neurons. The red cells are neurons here. Uh, it is almost the same magnification, um, but slightly it is uh, enlarged a little bit. Um, you can see more red cells here. There are few red cells here, although the, you know, there is a larger area here. But if you look at here, there are very few uh, neurons. 
the red cells, the neurons, and then the glial cells. These are microglia and the uh, astrocytes. So what I'm showing here are the microglia cells. The microglia cells are like um, the peripheral macrophages or the immune cells. You, you, um, uh, so these cells, they become highly active following a seizure and they start attacking neurons. So therefore, when there is a perfect balance in the normal brain between inhibitory and excitatory neurons, that balance is lost. So this microglia will misbehave and start attacking neurons and cause havoc in the brain. So that causes seizure. So that is in a very simple way. So a seizure can be detected on, <laughs> on EEG, something like this. So uh, this is uh, 21 uh, days after a seizure. Uh, after the first seizure, this is a spontaneous seizure. So that is how we detect a seizure in experimental model. So I will quickly go through this uh, slide. So epilepsy is one of the most common neurological disease. If, uh, as you know, it affects both humans and animals. Therefore, I have made this uh, slide humanized dog. It is a classical example of one health. Um, so it, 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 unfortunately, in Western countries, the epilepsy management costs a lot of money. So it has both economical and social uh, implications. It affects in about 2 million in the US alone and several millions uh, worldwide. So nearly one third of epileptic patients do not respond to the current treatment. And please remember, it affects both young and the old people. And 10% of Americans itself, and likewise in the, war, in the world, they experience seizures sometimes, either due to excessive fever or could be due to infection. But please remember, 10% of those people who experience a seizure can develop epilepsy by the age of 80 if they survive. So that is alarming. So that means not everyone who has a seizure is not epileptic. So 3% of those who have seizure in their lifetime can become epileptic patients. So what is going on in the brain? So that means something that first seizure triggers some changes in the brain and that causes epilepsy. So our research is to prevent that, prevent the pathology that happens in the brain following a first seizure to protect the brain from becoming epileptic brain. So that is our research theme. Why we have to do that? when there are more than 30 anti-epileptic drugs currently available to treat. Unfortunately, another 45 drugs that were in clinical trial failed. So therefore, it is important to target this one third of epileptic patients that do not respond to this nearly 30 anti-epileptic drugs. So therefore, we are um, looking for an alternative approach. So as I said previously, epilepsy is an, uh, an imbalance between excitatory and inhibitory uh, pathway. Um, so under normal physiological condition, uh, there's a perfect homeostasis. Um, in an epileptic brain, there is an imbalance between the two. So therefore, there is hyperexcitation in the brain. So therefore, all the research so far, they focused on correcting this balance without paid much attention to controlling misbehaving glial cells. So these drugs, the currently available, they target neurons, but not glial cells. So our approach is to target both misbehaving glial cells and also hyperexcited neurons. So this is a common uh, approach in the past. So our novel approach is to target um, a different pathway. So here is uh, uh, something I would like to share. So in humans, you can put scalp electrodes and you can collect EEG, but in mouse and rats, we can't do that. So we use a special uh, device and we implant them uh, in the mice and then suture them. And after a week or so, it looks perfectly normal, but we can collect EEG, something like this. Then we challenge them with uh, a seizure inducing drug called the canic acid, or as you know, organophosphate toxicity, organophosphate can cause seizures. So we have two models, one kinic acid, acid model, another is organophosphate toxicity model. So both induce a seizure and the pathology caused by both is very much similar. So following seizures, when you give diazepam, so it stops seizures. So you can see here are the seizure, seizures um, clusters. So following treating with diazepam, 
So almost it looks um, normal um, brain electrical activity. However, six hours later, all those clusters reappear. That means once the drug effect is gone, you can't stop seizures. Uh, it completely, you know, <clears throat> it is not effective. So therefore, in addition to giving diazepam, we must give something else to prevent the ongoing brain pathology. So quickly, I will go through this slide. So epileptogenesis is the process of development of epilepsy after a first seizure or a brain insult. So you might have heard that once a person has a head injury, it is likely that he may develop, he may, not to worry too much about that, he may develop uh, epilepsy later in, in life. So the journey that starts from first seizure, first insult to first spontaneous recurrent seizure, so it can happen after a month, after a year, after 10 years in humans, but in rats and mice, it can happen within four to five days. So that process, when the first seizure occurs and then the second, and the first spontaneous seizure occurs, so that gap, that process is the epileptogenesis. So once a spontaneous seizure occurs after several days of first insult, then we call that epilepsy, okay? so. From first insult to spontaneous seizure, these are some of the changes that occur in the brain. So there will be increased epileptiform spiking activity. So that can be measured using electrodes as I showed in the previous slide. So here is the normal, you know, how the normal brain look like. Here is an epileptic brain. You can see a lot of spikes going on there. So when that means the neurons are excited, hyper excited. So that triggers a signal to the surrounding glial cells, microglia and astrocytes misbehave and they become reactive. So as a result, they really become large. So this is a normal brain that is an astrocyte microglia and you can see they are large and also there are several nuclei within this. So that means these are reactive. Once they are reactive, they begin to attack neurons. So this is a normal brain. These are the neurons. You can see the neurons are attacked by the microglia cells. So as a result, these reactive glial cells, they start producing nasty chemicals. Nitrooxidative stress, you might have heard about that. So reactive oxygen species, ROS, reactive nitrogen species. So there is excessive amount of nitrooxidative stress. So we use certain markers to identify those. And um, the reactive astrocytes and microglia also produce pro-inflammatory cytokines and Chemokines. You might have heard about cytokines, cytokine storm in COVID. So any change in the brain could lead to excessive amount of um, uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines. So this is, for example, in this graph, you can see in the control brain, there is um, less amount of uh, IL-2 or IL-6, IL-1 beta in control. The black, <coughs> black uh, bars are from the epileptic brain. So these changes, the increased epileptiform activity, reactive gliosis, nitrooxidative stress, pro-inflammatory cytokines, they all lead to death of neuron that is called neurodegeneration. Just look at these two brain sections. This is a normal brain. So if you look at the number of neurons here, there are very less. And also if you look at that, some of the um, yellow labeled cells, these are called fluorogate B. These are the marker. This is a marker for neurodegeneration. You can see there are more number of FJB positive cells suggesting that the neurons are dying and some of the neurons that are dead are removed by the microglia cells. Okay, so this is what happens in the uh, epileptic brain. So as a result, there will be compensatory mechanism, the neurogenesis. So our research is focused on how we can prevent all these biomarkers. If you start a treatment soon after a first seizure, can we suppress epileptiform spiking? Can we suppress reactive gliosis? Can we suppress nitroxy? Can we suppress all this? That is the theme of my research in my lab. So for which the NIH has, um, um, has funded three grants. So we are working on uh, two different drugs targeting uh, some of the pathways. So I will skip this. Um, so here is how a seizure looks like um, in, in uh, oh, it's not working. I wanted to show this. Uh, okay, this video is also not working for some reason. So this is how, um, whether it is a mouse or, or, or a rat, 
Um, so you, you will you will see a rat if, if the um, video was working, probably would have appreciated a seizure, seizing rat here at the same time showing this uh, seizure on EEG. Um, so there are other, other things we look at uh, to find. So here is a, a summary of hypothesis, um, uh, what we have been pursuing. So think about a neuron, a synapse here, right? So following seizure, what happens? The neuron is hyperexcited. That's what I showed the epileptic form spiking, the spikes, okay? So that causes um, activation of certain genes, and then it activates the microglia cells to produce pro-inflammatory cytokines. And then it causes neurodegeneration that triggers a seizure and that causes permanent brain damage. So we are looking at drugs targeting some of these pathways and some of these pathways over here. And these are certain drugs we have been testing to achieve modification in the development of disease. So I'm not going into uh, much detail about this, all the pathways. So here is just an example to show the reactive oxygen species marker is increased in epileptic brain compared to control. Likewise, it is a marker called the uh, FIN that is a marker for neuroinflammation uh, that is also uh, increased. So that means the following a seizure, some of the molecular uh, rearrangement occurs and that produce nasty chemicals. And these nasty chemicals will uh, cause uh, pathogenesis. So to trigger um, uh, epilepsy. So th these are some of the um, projects. Um, Marsan Putra is, is from Indonesia. He's a, a, a great PhD student. He's working on uh, diaposine. And we published a paper uh, recently. Um, so if you are interested, you can see, uh, you, can, you can read that paper. Uh, and this is another uh, paper that we published in uh, Neurobiology of Disease. Um, <clears throat> this is another project that is DFP I was talking about. Megan Gage is another uh, a brilliant uh, under, uh, uh, PhD student uh, working on uh, on these projects. And we recruited uh, um, another graduate students from um, uh, Mumbai. Um, Nikhil Rao is also, he has also joined for this, uh, this meeting. Uh, it is nice to see him. Uh, so he will, he will join us in, in, in two weeks time and he will work on, on, on these projects. Um, so these are the guys who, who should really thanking. Um, so it is not that I worked on this project. It, these are the hardworking guys and you can see who dominates uh, in my lab, these are the three boys uh, who is bowing their head down. So these are the bosses uh, who is um, um, leading the lab. So as you can see, I am not in the picture, okay? Because these are the guys who did the work. So I was somewhere else dreaming about money, grants to fund the students and publications. And when I get bored with these two, I will think about dog and cat anatomy. So I must thank um, the funders, the NIH has funded uh, these three projects. So this month we are uh, concluding this project and these are the two new projects. And this is the new project I got this uh, about, two, about three months ago. Also I got some ISU seed grant and, and um, AstraZeneca, I am collaborating with this uh, on this drug, the saracatinib. And I won a competition under open innovation. Um, so that's it. So I, I hope, um, I try to persuade you something novel. Thank you. Congratulations, Dr. Pesami. Thank you for the wonderful and very innovative ideas you just forced about the curriculum and also how to integrate different uh, departments, different aspects of the uh, curriculum. Thank you very much for that uh, very good for thought presentation. Uh, Thank you, Ravi. the time for discussion, open the floor is open for any questions. If anybody, I just see any chat box, any questions are there? I'm not finding any. <clears throat> yeah. There may be loads of anatomy okay. questions, Ravi. Indian scenario, we have to take animal husbandry subjects also with veterinary medicine. How do we go about it? Yes, that is the that, that that's what I was I was talking about animal husbandry when I when I said about uh, collaborating with uh, farmers. I think that is that is something that really we can uh, you know, students can benefit from that. Uh, if they are not coming from the rural background, I strongly encourage um, uh, students to think about on those lines and also faculty. Um, 
um, and also the forms um, that there, there may be state forms and so that is something uh, and, and field veterinarians so there should be a, a loop created between the colleges and then the field veterinarians and then the farmers um, so that way um, you can you can uh, address the issues that are relevant to um, the local community Thank you. Again, I, I must say I'm, I'm, I am not an expert in animal husbandry. I must admit that uh, my, my knowledge is limited to curriculum, ac more academic and, and research oriented. Uh, I am sorry. I mean, I, I, I can't, I can't uh, be very helpful in answering that question. Okay. One more question. While heart is a visceral organ, why we can't study heart is plant knowledge? Mm -hmm. Again, as I said, Break, break all the barriers. Um, Splank is a visceral organ. Um, again, it is up to the curriculum committee. Uh, it doesn't matter where, where you learn uh, as long as you have that uh, uh, mindset to integrate, that really matters. Um, you just cl classify whatever you want to classify, but at the end of the day, make sure that you integrate. So don't learn bones as bones and uh, osteology and then myology, angiology, neurology. Yes, those are terminologies. Just just learn and forget them. But bring the real stuff to apply later in clinical years. Yeah. Uh, please suggest one second. One more question is there. <clears throat> Areas of research in anatomy. There is. Uh, can you just tell me? Should I think about residency program? Huh. Um, those, those days are gone. Uh, there is nothing like uh, uh, research in anatomy, research in physiology. So it is all integrated approach. So you will never ever come across. I mean, if, if you are really interested in just anatomy related locomotion, for example, injuries, uh, there is still a lot of research going on there. For example, uh, stem cell therapy for uh, tendon injuries in equines. So if you really want to put yourself, frame that into anatomy, yes, tendon, uh, injury. Um, so that is where now the research um, ideas are going. Uh, there is not, there is nothing, nothing there left to do um, new research. However, however, having said that, for example, in nature, if you look at uh, nature, there are muscle, muscles of facial expression. For example, the pets, our dogs, they show a lot of emotions, um, whereas uh, um, the wild dogs, they don't have much emotions. That is because of changes in the facial muscle ex expression and the, the muscle uh, anatomy um, and, and, and some of the physiological components. So that type of research, you know, um, again, if you have access to, you know, wild, anim wild animals that were brought, brought, brought to the postmortem, for example, I heard there's a lot of cheetahs, not cheetahs, uh, leopards, right? Um, so are accidentally dead due to a road traffic accident. Um, so you can, if, if they are brought to postmortems, you can use those resources to find something new that, you know, the retractal, for example, the tendons um, in, in leopards. So there are so many things you can compare the big cat versus small cat. So think about that. So if you get a, a leopard, unfortunate leopard for a postmortem, so use that material to dissect and see how different is that from a, a, a normal cat. So that can that it can be a very good project. Yeah. Uh, one more question. How is evaluating the skill set proficiency of the students rather than conducting the exam and awarding marks? OK, so um, again, I will go back to live anatomy. Um, so instead of. Um, asking a electron process of the ulna, bring a cow or a cattle or, a, um, or, a, or, a, or an elephant or a, or a horse and ask them to palpate and show. Okay, and then when it comes to nerve injury or nerve block, so ask them where to inject or how to collect the blood and ask them to talk about, okay, you are collecting blood from jugular vein. So think about in a horse, if you are taking uh, you know, jugular vein, if you poke the vein through and through and you may damage 
a nerve there and then then cause sympathectomy so think about that so when you are giving intravenous injection so how you should give how much pressure you need to apply in a heart compared to uh, you know uh, in a buffalo for example so those type of things unless you are teaching them with animals and asking questions while the animal is standing there so instead of writing i mean again there are subjective and objective type um, questions the skill sets um, yes so that is um, based on how much facility you have how much you teach how much you provide them hands on techniques um, so that will um, determine uh, what how how you will test your students yeah there is one more question how to integrate computer science that is machine learning artificial intelligence in veterinary medicine so you can use computers for um, especially teaching innovation some of the things what I, what i use been we have we are developing an atomy app that will take some years to um, to release it. of course it will be free for um, uh, for everyone this is something i am dreaming instead of publishing textbooks i i'm i'm going to publish a free anatomy app um so you can um you know um ask computer specialist to generate something uh, again i i must i must uh, uh, say that i am ignorant on uh, computer related born or, or either even artificial intelligence i am not that intelligent enough to think about that but certainly i i collaborate with um, um computer uh, specialist or um, uh, imaging specialist um to create some material for my teaching so you can utilize such expertise um, to translate some of the textbook knowledge without um you know affecting the copyright uh, sometimes when so that is another mindset we should come out of the copy and paste mindset we should we should we should avoid that we should we shouldn't do that um, so bring some innovation use the computer specialist to create some innovative uh, learning materials for example and also how to educate uh, farmers on certain things like nutrition um or maybe um, certain disease or toxin there are several toxic plants around so make some apps nowadays farmers are are clever they they can ask their kids or somebody in the in the village who has got laptop or who has got uh, uh, iphone okay look at this plant and tell me what what is this one why my my you know my cattle has has uh, has eaten this plant and has developed toxicity so those type of things we can uh, um, again you, you know the problems local problems you can Uh, collaborate with um, computer scientists and you can develop some of the uh, you know apps i think dr satan and i already uh, developed some apps for agriculture related uh, extension related uh, uh, programs yes it is possible yeah uh, one more maybe probably last question is it time to separate veterinary medicine from animal sciences and is it also time to evaluate teacher by students i would i don't know how many how many of you will cross with me if i say that uh, i don't think you will speak to me again please 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 implement right now that is not to um disrespect anyone that is really important um we are funded by public money we are accountable and we should know um what we are doing and we must be subjected to evaluation so when we can test students why can't students test us is it is it not right yeah. is it wrong <laughs> in a way <laughs> yes they must evaluate us uh first part you didn't answer is it sorry which one veterinary med- is it time to separate veterinary medicine from animal sciences uh, the question is sent by one of my friends to ask you i'm sorry i i i don't know uh, i don't know um again these are all um, as i said uh, these are all just the barriers in our own mind in maybe or it may be if there is any administrative benefits um if that can make things better why can't yes change it okay thank you dr tipesh swami thank you very much for the wonderful uh, uh... interaction as well as the very very wonderful presentation definitely it has uh, uh, put all of us into thinking uh, how we should move forward especially curriculum integration and other things are concerned thank you very much and uh,
I think you can stop sharing your uh, presentation. We shall. Uh... Yes. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation, and I really enjoy talking. Thank you. Yes. Now we shall straight.